Today, on round six of Norway Chess, my mom was facing legendary Indian Grandmaster Hampi Konero. Norway Chess is one of the most prestigious chess tournaments in the world. Six women are fighting for $160,000, and my mom is the lowest rated in this tournament, but so far, she's been performing quite well. Now, Starting to this game, she had lost two classical games in a row, so my mom really, really, really wanted to get a win or obviously at least get a draw, because here if you get a draw, at least you get one point. And then you add up all those points in the standings and that's a different story. But the point is that she was facing Humpy Conero and this was the second time in this tournament that she was facing her because all the players play each other twice. In the first time that she played Humpy, she had the white pieces and she ended up drawing and now she had the black pieces. Now Humpy Canary is a legendary grandmaster because she literally became a grandmaster when she was 15 years old. And I believe that at the time when she did it, she was one of the absolute youngest people um, to become a grandmaster um, if you compare it to other women. So one of, one of the youngest females to ever become a grandmaster. She also hit over 2600 feet of rating at some point, which is absolutely amazing. And she is just super duper strong. So my mom had the black pieces and I was so nervous coming into this game. And Humpy started the game by playing d4. My mom went knight of six and this became a Nimso Indian. And Humpy went for this move e3, which the idea here becomes that after white attacks this bishop, black will actually take this knight to get these double pawns. And even though black loses the bishop pair, which I was so scared of my mom because she lost the other day because she lost the bishop pair. Even though black loses the bishop pair, it is okay because of the fact that white has a very weak pawn. So that is the kind of trade-off. So my mom now went c5 and you may say, oh, this is a free pawn, but it is not. If you take this pawn, you get three triple pawns, and let me tell you, this is the worst thing that you can have in chess. These pawns are just so stupid. There's no pawns that does, that's defending them. They're just standing on top of each other. They're not good. <coughs> so here, knight c6 was played, rook b1, and now my mom went b6. And the idea became, this was all theory, the idea was that after she went e4, Humpy wants to play e5 and activate this bishop towards the king. So my mom actually played knight e8 because now if white goes e5, then my mom can go d6 and just trade off the center. So knight f3, d6, bishop g5 threatening the queen. Now my mom actually um, played, I thought she was gonna go queen c7, but she was playing theory here and she played f6. And the funny part was that I wasn't really analyzing this position with the highest engine. So at first it said that this was a bad move, but the higher engine I put, the more it was saying that this was a good move. And the reason this is a good move is because we're threatening the bishop. The bishop has to go somewhere and black is going to play on the idea of playing e5. The idea of e5 is that you're targeting the center, so white has to kind of deal with this at some point. We're also opening up for this bishop and we see that Black doesn't have a dark squared bishop anymore, so black loves to put their pawns in dark squares. It would be a disaster now if black had a dark squared bishop because that bishop wouldn't even be a bishop anymore. It would be a big tall standing pawn. But now that black has a light squared bishop, this bishop can navigate through the pawns very easily. So h3, now my mom captured, captured, and actually went knight c7. This is a little bit of a scary move because it actually allowed for, for Humpy to play this, which, the, the, the reason this is scary is because if you take here, then after takes, knight takes d4, there is this move c takes b6, threatening this knight in between. And now if we take here and takes, we see that this pawn just becomes super, super, super weak. So even if something like this happens, looks like it's going to be around equal, it is equal pawns, but the problem is that now this pawn becomes very weak. So this would not be a good position. So luckily after knight c7, Humpy missed it and still I was hoping that my mom would take here on d4, but she didn't, she moved up the queen because she wasn't scared of Humpy pushing this pawn. She thought if Humpy pushes this pawn, she will just simply put the knight over here, a bishop over here, and then go for this pawn. And this pawn will never be able to push down. However, after queen c2, my mom finally took this pawn and I was so happy when she did this because now all of her pieces kind of came together. 
My mom only had 54 minutes at this point though and that was making me really, really stressed because I felt like she has so little time. Like, how is she going to play with 30 minutes less than Humpy? She spent some time thinking here as well and ended up playing knight c5 now with only 48 minutes left on the clock. And here I really felt like my mom's position is good, but how is she going to play with so little time? Now one of the fun things that happened this game as well was that my mom actually went up to the confessional booth in Norwich House. In this tournament there's a confessional booth which is basically a place where players can talk about their thoughts during the game. No woman in the tournament has done it yet so my mom was the first one to do it during this round and it was honestly because I forced her. <laughs> I was like mom there's not a lot of times when there's a confessional booth you have to go to the confessional booth and she's like okay Anna I'll do it. So she did it yesterday and I'm so proud of her. She only was there for like one minute and didn't even talk about the game but it was all good. It was amazing that she went there and that she and that she decided to to talk there. Um, we've seen players such as Hikaru being there all the time Magnus has been there a lot too, so some players have been going there a lot, but my mom hadn't gone there yet and I hope that she goes to the confessional a few more times because I think it's a really cool idea to be able to hear these grandmasters thoughts during the game. I think it's a really cool idea. So yeah, knight c5 was played and now in this position Humpy thought for f like 35 minutes or 40 minutes. She thought for so long. I remember when I was broadcasting this, it was like, you know, what do I do now? Like, she's thinking for so long. So I think I took like a few water breaks because I just didn't know what to talk about anymore. I was talking about apples and fruits and I don't even know what I was talking about at this point. She thought for so long and the reason she thought for so long was because I would suppose that she wanted to find a way of playing this out without having to trade this bishop but she couldn't find a way to do that. So actually after all this time, after yeah 33 minutes, she ended up taking my mom's knight and now finally it was equal time. It was really important here that my mom took with the d-pawn because if she takes with this pawn, which typically makes sense taking towards the center, the problem now is that this rook becomes really good and really strong. And not only that this rook become really strong, but also this pawn becomes really weak as it's going to be forever a backwards pawn. So it's much better to capture like this and keep the pawn structure together like this. So here a4 was played, bishop e6, and now a5. And now uh, my mom simply defended this pawn. And here my mom, even though it's equal, I would say that it's, she's slightly better just because of the fact that this bishop is just stuck behind these pawns. And I think the position is a little bit easier for my mom to play. So there were a few trades and now Humpy played this move e5 with the idea that if my mom takes, she will take this pawn on h7. And this wouldn't really be something that my mom wants to do because now this pawn is weak. So here instead my mom simply defended the pawn with g6, rook b3, Humpy wanted to double up the rooks on the b-file and now my mom played this really important move bishop f7 because if she does something random, let's say that she goes, let's say that she takes this pawn, then there's this move bishop takes g6 and after takes, takes and takes, there's this check and after, well if king g8 there's going to be some checkmate and if this then queen takes e6 and then she's going to be a pawn up but also the whole position is going to be lost for my mom. So she couldn't do that. So my mom instead found the best move which is bishop f7. Now Humpy went rookie one without really caring about this pawn and my mom quite quickly took it. It's, it's, it's a free pawn but it's going to be a pawn that's difficult to hold on to. So queen b2, Humpy was threatening both this pawn and this one. And now my mom played queen d6 with the trick that if rook takes e5, there's this beautiful move b5. And now Humpy cannot take here with the pawn because the rook is hanging. And if she takes with the rook, then after the trades, the bishop is hanging. And if you simply go something like bishop f1, then you can play even b4 and just have a passed protected pawn forever. And now black is going to be playing for the win which I was really hoping that my mom would do. But instead Humpy took with the queen, they traded queens and after this move, rook b1, Humpy Conero actually offered my mom a draw. And my mom rejected it. <laughs> she went rook f6, she wanted to try to keep on playing for the win because she thought that she can never lose this possession and she thought that she would be slightly more active. And there are a lot of lines here like, yeah, there were, there were a lot of different ideas here. Um, but my mom went rook f6 to try to play rook d2 and put pressure on this pawn. Rook d4, rook b1, 
She played g5. The idea was that if takes, she wanted to go takes, takes, and rook here. And now if Humpy plays any move apart from rook b8 and rook b7, then there's going to be this pawn that's going to fall. And then this is going to be just a winning piece for my mom. So Humpy has to do this, pin the bishop, and then go for repetition check. My mom can't really go for something like this because it becomes whoopsie checkmate. So, um, yeah. She's close to touching a piece. Just do it, mom. She's going for g5. She is going for g5. Look at that. She's finding g5. Wow, she played g5. She played the best move in the position. g5. She's not even writing it down. What is even going on here? Is she shocked with her own mail? Is she shocked at how well she's playing herself? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> she didn't even write it down. She just played g5 and was in awe. <laughs> so my mom played g5, f3, and here, after a few more moves, my mom offered a draw, and they ended up drawing in this position. Oh, agree draw? Draw? Yes! <laughs> So my mom drew with the black pieces, which meant that this game was going to be going to Armageddon. There had to be a decider. But this time, my mom would have black pieces in the decider, which was much better than when she had white, as with black, she only needed a draw to win. However, there was a catch. In this tournament, in the Armageddon matches, white starts with 10 minutes on the clock and must win the game, and black starts with 7 minutes on the clock and must win the game. There is only one second increment that starts after move 40. So, very little time. My mom had three minutes less than Humpy Konyaru, but everything she needed was a draw to win this match and secure that extra half a point. She got one point for the draw and then 0.5 points is what she would get if she would now draw or win this game. So, she hasn't won up till this point. She hadn't won a single game or a single match in the whole tournament. So I really wanted her to win. Like I was so nervous. I was <laughs> so nervous for my mom. So the game started D4, Knight of six. And I'm gonna go through this game pretty fast because, well, this was a really fast game as well. But the point was that um, this actually became very good for my mom quite early on. I was very surprised that, that Connor was playing this in a must win game. My mom was playing super fast, and that was actually the one thing that my dad had told my mom before the game. He was like, Pia, if you have a bad position, but you have more time than Konoru, then there's going to be a lot more chances that she messes it up and you win the match. So my mom was just focusing on playing fast. That was everything that she wanted. She wanted to flag Humpy. <laughs> she wanted to flag Humpy Konoru. So here my mom made a mistake and this started making me so nervous because she missed that after the exchanges, Conor has this really strong move, bishop b5, and now the problem is that this pawn is super weak, so my mom retreated and defended, but now Conor missed the chance to play bishop c6, trade off the bishops, and then keep a rook over here that would forever put pressure on this pawn, and now my mom would have a really difficult possession. However, Humpy didn't take advantage of this opportunity and now my mom was slowly but surely equalizing. Here, Humpy could also have gone knight detail. So, I was so nervous at this point, but my mom started playing some really good moves. She traded pieces, she brought in the queen, she played a5. This was a move that I was kind of asking, you know, what happens if she plays a5 and then she did it. Now this pawn was under attack. My mom was still under pressure. She had to defend the pawn. But here, a move such as rook c5 would have been really, really, really strong as the rook can never be kicked away because then the pawn is hanging. So rook c3 was played, queen c7, rook here, and now knight d7 would have been fine for my mom as if rook takes pawn, she can take this pawn, but now she made a move that I thought would make the game over. She played knight, well, she started with g6, and now she played knight a6. A huge blunder. She had more time at this point than, than Conoru, but the problem was that I thought that she was just losing on the spot. And here I started saying, oh no, like, it's over. Because I didn't realize, I thought at first that she was just losing a piece, because after this the queen and the knight are hanging, but she at least has this move, queen d7, um, where now Humpy cannot take the knight because then the rook is hanging. So 
Here, actually, she had to find rook b1. This was the strongest move, and this was not an easy move to make with two minutes on the clock. So she played h5 instead. She was going all in for the attack, and my mom found the best move, f5. Now there were some trades, and now I started seeing hope again because it was equal pawns, and the only problem that my mom had was that her king was very unsafe. So my mom did everything to trade queens, and this was almost the mo also a moment where I said, what happens if f4? Because now there's this check, and this forced the trade off queens. And I thought this would be a, an easy draw. My mom thought it was an easy draw, but actually the only move that draws here is g5. And the reason this is the only move that draws is because now if king g4, there's knight takes g2. The point is that my mom needs to just trade as many pawns here as possible, but she didn't play that move. Instead, she went knight h5 check, and now she had a really bad position again, but Humpy messed it up with a little time. She only had 20 seconds left. It was just an incredibly hard position to play. Here, king g5 would have been better. She played bishop c4. My mom defended, stopping now the king from, from going up f4, knight g7, and now the important part is obviously my mom cannot trade the knight for the bishop, then she's losing, but she was just trading as many pawns as possible, and here she started just checking, and at one point, after she took this pawn, she realized that she could sacrifice the knight because there was no way of defending the g2 pawn, and now after this it became a draw and my mom therefore won the Armageddon because she only needed a draw to win. So she actually won the match and this was a great revenge from when she lost the match against uh, Konaru in the beginning of the tournament. So this was the first time that my mom won a match and I am so happy for her. She got one and a half points, which is great. She's still last in the rankings, but she's only 0 0.5 points away from Humpy Konaru and if my mom, the next round wins in the classical, she's literally going to be going up so many points, or even if she wins another match and gets one and a half points, she's gonna get up so many points and she can get a really good standing. So we're starting to enter the second half of the tournament. It's now that everything is going to be decided, but wish my mom luck in the comments down below, because even though she was the lowest rated at, in the beginning, she has a chance of doing a really good tournament if she just clutches these last few games. So I'm so happy for her that she finally got her first match win. I feel like she's had so many good positions and so many good games that she really deserved the win like this. And yeah, wish her luck for the next match. And I'm gonna insert the little clip of how happy she was after the game, because she was really happy. I'm so proud of her. Ah, it's a draw! She did it! She drew! Let's go, mom! Once the arm again! Let's go! <laughs> finally! Oh, she's needed this win. She's needed this win in the match. Oh, she did it. She did it, she did it, she did it. She's gonna be so happy. Oh, she did it. Oh my, that was crazy. <laughs> okay, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.